So you want to upgrade your car audio system, but you've chosen to have a professional do the work. There's no shame, there's nothing wrong with that. In this video, I have some do's and don'ts that will not only make the process go as smooth as possible and help you get the best value for your money, you will also be able to create a healthy transaction that helps everyone win, both you and the business. As a disclaimer, I'm personally in a unique position to talk about this as my business focuses primarily on teaching about car audio. So I have many friends that own shops in the car audio industry, but also as a past DIY consumer, I can understand the challenges that come with hiring the right shop to do the job as well. So let's dive into the do's and don'ts of hiring a shop to do your car audio install. So first up on the list is you do want to have a good understanding of your budget that you're willing to spend on your car audio system. You of course need to come up with a number that you feel financially comfortable with, but what I'd really recommend here, and I see a lot of people make this mistake, is avoid just looking up a list of gear and totaling up that gear and then deciding, hey, that's my budget. As an example, let's say somebody wants to have a radio installed. It'd be really easy for them to just look up a particular radio model and go, okay, that costs $500. So I know that my exact budget for this install should be $500. You have to understand that of course, there's going to be labor associated with the install, which is going to make the install cost more than that $500. You also have to understand that with today's latest advanced systems in vehicles, Vehicles, a lot of times you need advanced integration parts to add something as simple as a radio. These integration parts might also be needed in order to get the signal for something like an aftermarket amplifier. The point is these additional integration parts can easily add more cost. So rather than just getting a list of gear and saying that's your budget, come up with a number that you're willing to spend that you can share with the shop and allow them to help you best determine how to get the most value out of your budget. Now also let's say that you don't know a whole lot about car audio, you have no idea what you need whatsoever, and you really don't even know what a starting point for your budget should be, there's nothing wrong with going to a shop and just being upfront with that, saying something along the lines of, you know, hey, I don't know much about car audio, but I'd like to upgrade my car audio system. Here are my goals. And I was just trying to get a rough idea of the budget that would be needed to do that level of install. Once I know that budget, I'll be able to save up and I'll be able to make a purchase with you guys. Being upfront like this with a shop helps them to better understand where you are in the purchasing process so that they can make a better recommendation to you. Now really quick, I wanna butt in here and tell you guys about the LC2i Pro from our show sponsor, Audio Control. We are talking about some of the different integration pieces that might be needed to add aftermarket gear. This right here is an active line output converter. It allows us to take the factory speaker level signal into the device and we can convert it to low level line level outputs for an aftermarket amplifier. Not only that though, the Pro version here is unique as it gives us some advanced integration features that we need for today's latest vehicles. And it also has Audio Control's AccuBase, which allows us to restore the bass that is often removed as you turn up the volume on a factory radio. They remove that bass to protect their inexpensive stock speakers. But if we're upgrading everything, we don't want that bass removed anymore. And the AccuBase helps us retain it. You can learn more about the LC2i Pro at the links down in the video description. Now the next do when you are hiring a car audio shop to do your work is do ask to see some of the shop's past work. This should definitely be one of the first things that you do when you talk to a shop. I think a lot of times people make the mistake of getting too into the weeds on exactly what's going to be done with their install first. First, you should focus on you know, what level of quality is this shop actually capable of achieving? And you can do that by seeing some of their past builds. Many shops will have a demo vehicle that they've done that you can sit in and take a listen. And of course you should be addressing how good the system actually sounds, but you should also be addressing the installation quality. Ask to look at things like, as an example, under the hood, is the fuse properly mounted? Is the wiring nice and clean? Ask to look at the amplifier rack. Is everything easy to service and to get at? and accessible, you can usually get a pretty good feel for the quality level from a shop by seeing a demo vehicle like this, or if they don't have a demo vehicle, you could also ask to be able to look at previous pictures of installs. And a lot of shops nowadays are getting really good about having an active Instagram account where you can see all of their past installation work. 
Now there is a don't here though. Don't say, well, I saw so-and-so do it this way, so that's the way that I want you guys to do it. Understand that every shop has different ways of going about doing things. A perfect example of this is when it comes to amplifier racks and their wiring. Some shops out there have made it a standard where literally every wire on an amplifier rack is zip tied to the rack and organized. But here's the thing, at the end of the day, while those shops might value that, and I personally, I value something like that, it doesn't really mean that you have to do that. At the end of the day, let's say all those power wires, let's say they're all wrapped together in a bundle and they're not individually separated next to each other, it's really gonna make no performance difference in the final system. So these are just the kind of things that you have to understand take additional time. So if you want that, by all means, you can have that, but be willing, one, to pay that additional amount, and two, understand that different shops install things different ways. There's not always one right answer way that things have to be done. Now, another do for you, when you're going through the quoting process with the Car Audio Shop, I definitely recommend that you do request that you get your OEM parts of the vehicle back. Obviously, most shops are going to do this anyway, but I think it's always safe to make sure that you do get that gear back. But the more important thing that I think is worth mentioning during the quoting process is asking if it's possible that the install is done in a way that the vehicle can easily be returned back to its OEM car audio system if need be. As an example, let's say that you're having your speakers upgraded in the vehicle. We would wanna make sure that no modifications are done to those speakers when they are removed, and we'd also wanna make sure that the stock wiring harness is somehow retained so it's easy to reinstall those speakers if need be. The reason I think this is important, and I tell people this all the time, look at car audio as an investment. If you're gonna buy a really, really good set of speakers, when you go to trade in that car or when you go to junk it someday, you obviously don't wanna just give away the speakers with it. You want to get those speakers back. When you're trading in a used car, the dealer is never going to give you any added value for an aftermarket car audio system. So it's better to be able to take that aftermarket gear out of the vehicle, have it easily swapped back to OEM so that everything works, and then use that nice gear that you've invested in in your next vehicle. It makes it a lot easier to justify spending good money for good car audio gear when you know that you're able to take that gear from vehicle to vehicle and use it in the future. With that said, this is something else you're definitely going to want to do is do ask the shop up front that they give you the product boxes back for that gear. This is important, let's use a subwoofer as an example. Most times when a shop installs subwoofers, they're just going to discard all of the packaging materials for you. But if you've made a point up front to let them know that you want those packaging materials back, Back, it makes it easier for you once you get rid of that vehicle. If you did want to take those subwoofers and let's say sell them as used online, one, it's a lot easier to ship them now because you don't have to make some box for this big heavy subwoofer. And two, having the box for items always makes it easier to sell used. By having those packaging materials, you're better able to recoup some of that value if you need to in the future. And as far as it goes for keeping packaging materials at your house, just throw them up in the attic or down in the basement, wherever. It's usually just cardboard and plastic type materials that are gonna last a long time, just chilling wherever you put them. Now for this one, I have a do and a don't. You should definitely do your due diligence and go around and get multiple different quotes from different car audio shops, see what different car audio shops have to offer as far as their installation value when it comes to getting a quote. But what you should definitely not do, the don't, don't go with just the cheapest price. Hopefully everything that I've talked about already in this video helps you understand why. You need to understand the value of their installation. See what these different companies have to offer. Just because one company is less expensive doesn't automatically make them the better choice. You really need to analyze the value that you're getting between the two different companies as an example and go with the best value that is going to best meet your goals and needs. So you've gone through all the quoting process with the shop, you've picked the shop, you've determined what all is going to be installed for your system. 
I have another do and don't for you. Do determine a plan for leaving your car with the shop. At this point, you'll probably have a pretty good understanding for the labor and how many hours are going to be involved here, but it never ceases to amaze me how many people still think that, you know, replacing something like a radio and doing a full system is just a couple of hour job and you can sit in the lobby. A lot of times with today's latest vehicles, it could be multiple days for an install, depending on the level of fabrication and installation that you're having done. The point is, you should have a realistic plan. If the car is going to be there all day, just spend the extra money to get a rental so that you could drive back home. And luckily, in today's day and age, we have things like Uber and Lyft that could easily drive you around so you could go run some errands. Just let the shop do their thing, and that gets into the don't. Don't be the guy that is standing there watching over someone's shoulder. If somebody was sitting there watching over your shoulder while you were doing your job, odds are you're probably gonna be more likely to make a mistake because you're nervous and you're gonna be working more slowly. Just let the professionals do their thing. You've determined that they're the best shop for you, so let them do their work. So that's my list, but surely there is more to add. Shops out there, let us know what are some other do's and don'ts. And consumers out there, let us know what could shops do better. At the end of the day, for any business transaction to be a successful transaction, both parties, the shop and the consumer, need to win. The shop needs to make enough profit to justify doing the job and to be able to reinvest in their business in the future so that they're still around next time you need them. And the consumer needs to leave with a system that meets or exceeds their expectations for listening performance and is reliable for years to come. Speaking of reliable, if you're looking for a reliable line output converter, check out the LC2i Pro from show sponsor Audio Control. You can learn more about how to use this in your next car audio install at the links down in the video description. A special thanks to them along with Mike, Jerry, Mo, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. Check out some of the related videos here on screen. And as always, thank you guys for watching.